my little corner of the world. This is Casey's Corner. Surprise, I'm Casey. Hi! And bonus surprise, it's a new little corner of my world. What? Uh... Actually, okay, if you want to see more of it, definitely check out um, my Instagram at uh, Kayla Casey. This is my love space um, that I have been turning into my little my, my little sanctuary. It's become like the family reading nook. It's like a nice chill space. It's definitely like looking out the window. I can look down upon my my little parcel of the world and be like, yes, I work hard for that. And right now it is a field of um, like flowers and stuff because it's May. April showers have brought the May flowers. It is Beltane. Also, I'm don't don't at me about the pronunciations because literally there is just no it, it's whatever this is my texan pronunciation of the holiday and um, there if you want a whole fun little entomology word discussion about the variations of this word check out my uh, facebook at casey's corner i shared something from um monumental ireland or just go straight to them on their facebook page uh it's they had a wonderful discussion they posted this morning and I think it may be an annual thing. Anyways, I digress. Happy holidays, y'all, for the pagany folks who celebrate and pretty much, surprise, surprise, everybody, everybody, it's some sort of holiday all over the world in so many different aspects, so many different cultures. Um, shocker that this happens all the time, which is why I am starting my uh, next in my what makes a hedge witch series uh this is going to be my sabbath series uh yeah surprise i'm one minute in. i'm just telling y'all hi y'all yes this is my next i'm back with another what makes a hedge witch video and it's it's a new it's a new special it's the start of my sabbath series um which you know is part of why i'm out here i'm excited to talk about this one to start off with it because one what is a hedge witch like me doing celebrating uh organized religions sabbath holidays like wicca like what i'm uh so i want to talk about that because this i i love the sabbaths i love celebrating things surprise surprise um i love ritual i love routine i need routine um if you're new around here i'm bipolar uh bipolar too and routine is a significant part of my mental health um you know plan it's good for me so following um you know wheel of the year type holidays is not only good for you know my spiritual health um it's good for my mental health um i started doing this about 10 years ago or so that was about when i was um a little more than that but around the same time when i started practicing more out and open um was when I was also, you know, really applying the, you know, things I learned in through either cognitive behavioral therapy or through my continued like education. Cause I only had, I'm, I'm, I was uninsured. I had a limited supply of therapy, but you know, continuing education, uh, I have learned a lot of things as well. Um, yeah, libraries. Uh, so that was why I started, you know, one of the things that was advised was, um, and I've said it before, a lot of these books have a real Christian focus, so it's like, or just because the, the writer's perspective, that's just where they come from, um, but they know, you know, volu you know, volunteering at a church or, or joining church groups, things like that was a lot of things I would see recommended, um, you know, to help keep up with, um, following the track of the year is one of the issues uh you know that was part of what got me into being more open um and just incorporating my spirituality into the wholeness of my life just as I saw my Christian um family members and loved ones doing um you know I'd wanted that for me in so many ways but as I was um not having to conform and also as I was like as a solitary witch like I've tried joining Wiccan circle groups and it just organized religion just isn't for me but I do need community I do need ritual I do need routine so that's why I as a hedge witch have incorporated things like the wheel of the year into my practices 
um, because it helps me keep track of the passing of the year. Um, It helps me be more mindful of the passing of the year. Mindful practices is another thing that is really um, beneficial for one's mental health. So in order to do that for me, it was, it, it was, okay, I'm going to follow this year as a wheel. So I'm going to, what do these things mean to me? I'm going to stop and see what the world around me looks like. Um, that was when I did that first year I did this about, um, 10 years ago or so was, um, it's around that period of time, was when I really took, actively took, um, you know, pains to make sure I was outside multiple times a day, uh, most days of the year, just to expose myself to my environment, to what the horizon looked like, to what the celestial, you know, what the sky looked like, what the earth looked like, what my little corner of the world specifically was, like, you know, what the temperatures were like, what my climate was like, what grew in, you know, around my property and stuff. Um, so that, that was definitely something that helped me, um, get in touch with my spirituality, get in touch with, um, my ancestors that helped me really, um, you know, it changed a lot of things for me and it really, um, you know, made me feel secure in my solitariness, but connected. So very connected. Um, and, but when I was doing that, it's easy you know, to, to adapt Yule, Samhain, uh, you know, some of these other more, uh, these holidays that cross over big time with, um, you know, like Halloween and Samhain, uh, Yule and Christmas and stuff. That was easy as a mom and, um, you know, just as a person who had grown up mainly with, you know, Baptists and and Catholic family and, um, following, you know, their celebrations and stuff. Um, it was really easy to transfer those over into family friendly stuff for my family and for myself. Um, just stuff I could relate to and understand, um, as I furthered my education and stuff. Um, but when it came to Beltane, that was something that really, I, it was my least favorite holiday. Um, my knowledge of it was very Wiccan focused. So that was very binary and very sexualized. Um, you know, this holiday is ha ha ha. It's all about, you know, the sex parties or the orgy or stuff like that. But these stereotypes and stuff was big, 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 big back then. Um, still big, uh, around this holiday and stuff. It's kind of, people are getting a little bit talking more about everything else as well with this holiday. Um, but for you know, at the time it, it, for, you know, from my, from the nineties till then, that was my experience with that holiday. And I just did not relate. I I just didn't relate to it. Um, sex and sexuality isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind for me. Um, I'm, you know, I'm on the A spectrum. I'm, I'm, I'm Demi. I have loved ones that live in ACE uh, lifestyle. Um, and I know, you know, it, it just, that just felt very exclusionary and didn't make sense to me to just be so that focused. And also, you know, as you know, I went through my late teens and twenties, there was also trauma related issues, um, that built on top of that. So it was just a very triggering, you know, between it's just, it was a very triggering, a least favorite holiday of mine. Um, so, back around 2014 when I was going through all this, rethinking what these holidays meant to me and deciding, okay, this is how, wow, what am I going to do? Um, and and how am I going to build these traditions with my family? Cause that was another thing very important to me. I was a mom with three young boys. Um, you know, we were a blended family. My, uh, husband and I, um, while we had grown up together and everything and stuff, um, you know, we did, we didn't get together until our late, uh, you know, our mid twenties. And, and, you know, by this time, this was like, um, my late twenties, I had to do math for a second. Uh, you know, so I was, I was figuring out what traditions our family was going to have as a blended family and as an, you know, uh, you know, fairly agnostic, secular slash pagan family. 
I was pagan. He said, he was, uh, he's agnostic, um, you know, with former Catholic upbringings. Uh, so I had to rethink these things. And so when it came around to Beltane, another thing that also, this was fresh off of my, um, sterilization procedure after I had my youngest child. Uh, pregnancy is very deadly to me. I knew I was done. I had previously wanted it done. Um, so after I had my last one and that was so awful, um, I got sterilized. So the entire fertility aspect of this, you know, of Beltane was also very triggering at that time because I was no longer fertile. I didn't want to be fertile. Fertility was very, it was terrifying for me. Pregnancy was a deadly prospect for me. I, you know, so it just did not seem like something I wanted to celebrate. Um, I needed to find a different way. Um, so for me, it, it was, okay, well, what else about this holiday? So I started learning more about um, how did this holiday continue through the Christian areas? How did it become burst into the Wiccan areas? Like, what were those missing pieces? And I started, and what else? You know, and also started thinking about, okay, how are other people celebrating this time of year? There's all kinds of, um, you know, labor celebrations. There's floral celebrations. There's um, New Year's celebrations. My son yesterday just attended a New Year's celebration at a Laos temple. His uh, friend invited him to. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different ways people celebrate this time of year. Um, the, it's the midpoint between the solstice and the equinox, um, the spring equinox, the summer solstice. Uh, so it's, it, it, you know, we're itching for a celebration all over. This is human nature. So I started expanding my thoughts and the first year I, um, you know, had gotten some books from the library talking about, you know, old country English, like children's book. And it was talking about like May Day and May celebrations and flowers. Um, and had read that to my kids. They were, um, you know, all under the age of 10. My youngest was, he was, uh, about a, just over a year. Or no, 2014. He was a baby. Not even that, the first year. Um, but, uh, because I carried him dancing around with his brother that first year. But anyways, so we got the children's books. We were reading those. We made a little, the kids made, um, a staff for their own little maple. Uh, it was just like, uh, you know, a branch and stuff that had fallen down or whatever, um, that I'd saved for a walking stick and they used streamers, the paper streamers, um, tied a few, three of those on there, um, shoved it in the mud. We had dinner, a picnic dinner out by the fire that night, had a fire, um, and danced around singing, you know, they wrapped it up singing, uh, what did we sing like Reek Around the Rosie or something, some fun kid song. Um, and they laughed and they had a great time. I was just looking back through those pictures this morning. I'll probably pop some in as I'm discussing this. Um, and that became like one of the kids' favorite traditions. Oh, that year they also, um, the boys also picked flowers for me. Um, and that was another thing we discussed was um, har the sacredness of harvesting um, you know, special plants and things and how it's important to, you know, be mindful, um, to be courteous, to ask and appre show appreciation and stuff. Um, and so, you know, that was the first year my, my middle son, um, he was so happy. He, he I remember him, uh, asking the plants and then like replying back, giving them their little voice like, yes, it's okay and stuff and getting them and they decorated my hair with flowers that night um and so in the previous year you know we made we made flower crowns and eventually they aged out of that and you know but we for year after year that became our favorite family holiday um where we would we we built a permanent maypole in the back um it became our statement as a blended family like you know we are we're bound together. These, when we're wrapping up these, these, um, ribbons, we began hanging ribbons. My husband joined in, um, and it became definitely a symbol of like, you know, we're making our own traditions as a blended family. Um, 
and and we may not all be you know blood may not bind us all but we are bound by choice and we are bound by love and our commitment to one another oh I'm okay I'm back I'm okay I'm okay <sighs> it's just like I said this is my favorite holiday it means means a lot to me and so for a long time um that was how we celebrated Beltane we celebrated the family we celebrated our community um we would uh you know, as the kids got older, uh, this previous year we went to uh, Scarborough Fair as a family, and and um, they had you know saw the maypole dance there and stuff, and and um, you know my mom was down for that weekend. My oldest came down for a visit, and he got his first kit. He got some armor and stuff, um, you know, and it is just occurring to me like that is how we are adapting and celebrating. Um, because as my oldest has moved out, um, it is, you know, we're going through another period of time. Okay, what do these traditions mean to us? As we are all always able to get together on these special days or, um, you know, life just happens. And that was another important thing to me was I realized, um, you know, because early on those first few years, it was this day, day is the day of. Um, and then I started realizing like, okay, there's a little leeway with these holidays. Um, not everybody had like this Gregorian calendar we live on now, you know, forever and ever people went by the, this movement of the stars and the, what they saw in the environment around them. Um, so we started, you know, there's a little flex in this, like we've got today's is a fixed holiday. Um, there's also astronomical you know, Beltane, that's the actual midday date. That's like Friday this year. Um, you know, that, that date flux, you know, flexes, uh, <coughs> between how far it is from the fixed date to, uh, excuse me, by the way, um, to the astronomical date, you know, where the, you know, in relation to, you know, the equinox and solstice. I'm redundant, sorry. So we have these flexibilities um that I allow me not to be so hard on myself if once I started realizing that first of all because you put a lot of pressure and a lot of anxiety on yourself trying to fit a family life and a busy di two two different work schedules everything into these fixed days uh so one it's just a big ease to realize oh that's right um that we, we can be a bit more flexible with these things. That's okay um, for a lot of different reasons. And um, so that was another thing we started adapting over the years and as to what that holiday meant, what, what this day means to me and what this holiday and celebration means to me. It's a season, it's a season of celebration. It's a season of acknowledging, of watching the flowers come up and bloom. It's a season of appreciating the blooms um, and watching the pollinators and things. I love watching them go around. And yes, celebrating getting back outdoors with my family in multiple different ways. Lately, we've been doing creek walks again. Um, I'm loving it. I am so happy. Uh, you know, I think we're all loving it. It's been great for our mental health. It's been great for our physical health to get out and do this again. It was something we did a lot when the kids were younger. Um, and just lockdowns and everything just woof, cut all that off. And, and I know, like everybody, it's been hard getting back to those old routines. So, yeah, it's been good for us to get back to doing the things that, um, you know, finding new ways to celebrate this holiday, um, this season, this Sabbath. Um, the sacred time of year, um, and, f and for me to be recalibrating what, um, it means to me because it was so wrapped up in being, you know, in celebrating this family unit and, you know, this little bit of the world, uh, you know, my little corner of the world, uh, I definitely, you know, and in this past couple of years, it's really shook that up as, my son, you know, oldest son moved out. My next one, he's on, he, he, give him a year, he'll be on the way out. Um, you know, and the instability in the world was just like, what if I lose all this? What does this mean to me? Um, so that is definitely, you know, getting back to the core of it is just, yeah, appreciating this time of year.
appreciating the changes in this time of year, appreciating that we have made it through the winter. We've made it through like the initial work haul of getting into spring because it is a lot of hard work. And it's like, yes, let's enjoy it now. We get to enjoy the first initial mows of the year and, and enjoying our outdoors and stuff. Um, you know, we've gone through refreshing our, our fire pits and things like that. Now we get to enjoy the fires. Um, so I, I look forward to celebrating this Beltane season. I look forward to hearing how you celebrate this Beltane. Um, what does Beltane mean to you? What, what new ways are you figuring out as your life changes and stuff? Because frankly, um, I, you know, I don't think you know, one way of celebrating anything really fits for everybody. So I love hearing all the different ways people adapt and celebrate things in their own ways, in their own corners of the world. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from y'all. Uh, definitely um, be checking. I have, don't forget, I have a new, I have a website, K, uh, welcome to Casey's Corner .com. Um And you can find all my stuff there. You can find links to my coffee. Thank you so much to my coffee supporters. Um, on that note, I do want to um, just say a special, just I love you forever and ever and thank you. Um, Diana S, um, you've seen her on my, um, you know, as my Kofi, you know, card comes up as my, one of my supporters, um, for quite a while now. She's also been my friend, um, but recently she passed away, um, just suddenly and tragically it was just an accident, um, you know, it was, so, um, I just wanted to say thank you, um, just to mark that and to honor her um note you'll probably see like in you know uh, some sort of uh, memorial for her as i figure out how i want to i could uh, yeah um so just thank you to all my coffee sponsors uh thank you to everybody who's been over to my coffee shop um i really do appreciate you guys and love you so much um and um and you guys were my friends before you're, you know, and family, mama, I know, a number one copy supporter is my mama, um, but, uh, so it's, it's just to, to lose a friend and, and losing one of y'all has been, uh, it's been a rough week, um, but I am also really grateful to continue to help, you know, to have had y'all and to have had Diana in my life and um, the conversations that we had and um, you know to have had her support and to know, you know, just cheer me on. Um, uh, anything, oh, just, yep, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, um, do all the things. Um, I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Go get some water, hydrate. Oh, don't forget to check out my podcast. Um, for snack size visits to my little corner of the world, it's they're real quick, less than 15 minutes. Um, just grab you a snack and listen to some stories from, from me to you. Um, uh, y'all have a great Beltane season. Um, yep. And I will be back continuing the season or the series, the series. Love you guys. Bye. You can follow me at facebook.com backslash Casey's Corner or on Instagram at Killy Casey or on coffee.com backslash Casey's Corner. Want to support my work? Now you can buy me a cup over on coffee. Thank you to all my coffee supporters and special thanks to my monthly supporters, RTJC, Diane S, KS, and Raven and Rogue. Thanks for watching Casey's Corner. Subscribe, like, and share to show some love.